I could be selling this process for millions, but instead what I'm going to do is give it away for free. I'm on a new user account on my computer. I have absolutely nothing installed. So I'm acting like I'm an outsider and I'm going to go nice and slow and I'm going to show you how I do absolutely everything. And then I'm going to show you how the script works as well and how you can get it to work for your business. So the first thing is you need to get Git SCM. I have talked about this process before on my channel, but I just think this script is too good to not talk about. So go to downloads and then just download um, whichever version you need to download for your computer. And then open it, hit yes, and then just keep pressing next. And then you should get to the end here and it should start to install Git. While that's installing, we can get Python. So go to python.org slash downloads. Just download the latest version. It works with um, the Assistance API. It was um, Autogen that didn't work with an earlier version of Python. So the first thing we downloaded is just a way for you to clone a GitHub repository and put it on your computer. It's the easiest way to share code. This is just generally how people share code, especially if there's more than one file inside a folder. This is the best way to do it. And then the second thing we downloaded is Python, which is both a programming language and a, like a computing system, I guess. I don't really know what it is. Um, but you need it on your system in order to run Python scripts. So, so we're going to press finish here. That's git installed. And visual or oh, Python is almost downloaded. And then the other thing we need is Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio Code is an IDE. So an IDE is basically a way to interact with a folder which has code inside. So if you just scroll down on the home page and press download, it's just a way to change the code without doing complicated things. And it's, it's just a really, really easy way to do it. So to kind of explain what it is, on the side, on the left, you have like your workspace. And then on the right, you have whatever you are currently, whichever file inside the workspace you are currently clicked on. Now, previously, what I was trying to do was just trying to make an entire script just inside one folder without using Visual Studio Code. But it's really, really complicated. And once you have more folders and files, it, it just becomes extremely complicated very, very quickly. So the easiest way to interact with code is using Visual Studio Code. So we have Python installed. We do need to do something specific with Python. So I am going to run through the installation process. So the, you have to do this here, add python.exe to path. Uh, I'm pretty sure if you don't do that, like some some crazy thing happens basically where it doesn't really work properly. So make sure that you've added to path at the bottom. So now you can, we, we can just close this here and then let's go to the download here and open the Visual Studio Code setup. This is fine. This is all easy. Just press yes, yes, next. Actually, sorry, make sure you do add open with code here and add open with code here. And also you may as well correct, uh, create a desktop item as well and then install it. The reason is, is because you can then open fold folders on side your desktop. Like if I want to use this folder, I can right click it and there'll be an option here in a second that says open with code which is actually really, really useful. There it is. Open with Visual Studio. So now we'll launch it. We are now inside Visual Studio Code. This is where we're going to be doing pretty much everything else. So what we can do now is we can press Terminal, New Terminal. I know that we don't have anything open right now, but we're going to create the folder with my files already inside. And they're organized in a way that I will explain to you in a moment. So you can either go to this link or you can just do git clone. So like this, you can just write git clone or you can just copy this. I'll leave this in the description as well. And then copy the link like this and then say, just call it like auto blogger or something. Before I do that though, I just want to quickly show you what's going to happen. So. Let's go to 
the GitHub repository, which is what this is. And you can see there are several files in here. Okay. So you can see this one was updated 26 minutes ago. Okay. So this is the one that you should be using testing 3.py. I left the others in there because I'm a messy programmer and I don't know what I'm doing because I'm a complete noob. So what's going to happen is I'm going to say git clone and then this link and then this is the name of the file that you want to put the auto blogger inside. So when I hit enter here, provided that I've done everything right, which I haven't. Okay, so I didn't add it to path properly in the installation process and I do remember doing this. So just click uh, the search button, the Windows button and click edit the system variables here. Click environmental variables. I can't pause with the recording while I'm doing this. You're just going to have to suffer with me, guys. Double click the path entry under system variables. Double click the path entry. With the new button in the editor, add this. So new this. It does seem to already be there though, which is a little bit worrying. And this. Close and reopen the console. Okay, so let's see if this works. Close the console. Let's just close Visual Studio Code. Open it up again. Please work or I'm going to look really stupid. Terminal, new terminal. Rerun the same thing. There we go. It works. Nice. Perfect. Okay, so now we have Autoblogger. We have the Autoblogger on our system. Now we can start to play with it. So what you want to do is you want to press open folder here. And you want to look for Autoblogger, which is right here. Select folder. So like I said before, you want to hit yes, trust authors there, I think. I don't know if it actually matters. So like I said before, you, we're going to be using testing 3.py. So the first thing you want to do is you want to add your open API key to the eighth line. Okay, I just made everything bigger uh, so you can kind of see a little bit better. So add your API key here. And then the first thing you need to do is you need to get your internal links. So you should already have a list of your internal links. But if you don't, you can just go to your sitemap. So I'll go to twomen.it slash sitemap.xml. And you can do this semi-manually, you can do this yourself. You should already have a list of your important pages anyway. If you're a smaller website, then it's really, really easy to get a list of your internal links. Just do it manually. And then we're going to get sitemap to clipboard just because it's the easiest way to do it for me. It's a Chrome extension, which just really, really helps with this process in general. So once you've added it to Chrome, then just click on it, press HTTPS and press start. That should copy your URLs to clipboard. And then you can just click inside internal links.txt here, click inside it, press control A, and then press control V. And then make sure this is very, very important, press control S. Okay, so you copied, pasted over everything, and then you saved it. I don't know why they're, what, what is this? Why are they adding this category? Why do they do this to me? Why do they do this to me? Look at it. The, they've just, oh my God, they've just duplicated. I need to delete these. Anyway, sorry, I'm getting distracted, but this is so annoying. This, this wasn't me. This is just some idiot at um, my old job who's just doing stupid things. Anyway, so the next thing we need is uh, products.txt, which is just a list of your products. Now, you do not have to do this the complicated way, but I do recommend doing it the way that I'm going to show you. So two men test.py is another script. This does not do any writing. It doesn't do anything crazy. All it does is it just chooses 200 URLs or 200 products from the list of your, from, from your sitemap, basically. So we'll go back on the sitemap here. The first one on Shopify anyway, the, the, this, this part of the process only works on Shopify guys, but it just, if you're on WordPress, you can just scrape your own website it, or, you know, whatever you want. Just have a list of your products. It's not that complicated. Okay. Right click, save as, and then save as, and then click the download, like drag it and then press alt tab and then keep dragging it and then put it here. 
okay? You can also, you can do it in, in other ways, but that's just how I do it. And then right click it and then copy relative path. And then we're going to go back into two men test.py and on line 28, you'll see it says XML file path equals sitemap products 20 by XML. So that's the old one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the relative path, which is what you can see here. Okay. So it means like the, the, yeah, the, the name of the file. And I'm just going to highlight it and then do control V. That then replaces the sitemap. So now it's going to read your sitemap instead of my sitemap. Then we go to these three little buttons here, terminal, new terminal. And I'm going to do Python two men test.py. And it will just give me 200 links, 200 products. Now, if you want more products, I don't recommend going too high just because it makes ChatGPT a bit more confused. You can just change on line four. It says def extract sitemap data, XML file path, num URLs, number of URLs equals 200. So you can put this to 400, for example. I'd recommend leaving it under 300 because otherwise the data input is just too much information for um, the assistant. And then you can run it again. It will just give you another uh, few hundred products. And then you want to click and hold here, like just to the right of the last letter of the output. So click, hold, and then drag up. And then just drag all the way up to the first letter. And then let go of your mouse. And then press Control C. Okay, to copy. Then you want to click in products.txt. You want to click inside it. You want to press Control A. And then you want to press Control V like that. So this is probably a few too many lines. You don't really want this many lines. You want maybe like 800 is a, is a good one. OK, you can also specify um, if you want specific products, you could change this script to look for certain words like sneakers, etc. But I, I would recommend keeping it simple and just letting ChatGPT do its thing. Now, if you don't have that many products, then it problem solved basically automatically the final thing we need so this is so far we've done the internal links and we've done the products that's now set up that's two files the final file is the content plan what you can do the first thing you can do is you can click on the before the first letter of the third line and then drag all the way down like that to the last letter but you can kind of do it where it just knows what you want to want it to do and then delete delete and then control s to save okay so what that does is it allows you to just write one blog post at a time um just so you can practice the output because my output might not be the same as your output the way it reads products.txt might be different the way your shopify uh, sitemap is set up or the way you input your products might be different okay so you do always need to test so i recommend just testing on one at first and then if you like the output, then try it on a few more. So we're going to click inside here. We're going to do control A, control C, and then we're going to go over to our trusty friend, ChatGPT. So I actually like to use ChatGPT 3.5 because it's a little bit quicker. And what I like to say is keep this exact format. Okay, and then you would just think of some topics. So best sneaker brands 2024, best black sneakers 2024, best crocodile um, sneakers 2024. I'll just put best crocodile 2024 because I can't remember what items of crocodile we have. And then I'll give it the format here. This is the format. And then we'll hit enter. So it's completely messed that up. And I'm just going to say, please keep the exact format of this content plan. OK, there we go. 
So I said, um, stop adding lists. I'm just asking you to make a content plan, blah, blah, blah. So once you've got it, you can always return back to this um, chat with ChatGPT. I'm just going to say remove as it interferes with, with the formatting. Okay, there we go. So now we have it perfect. I'm going to press copy. And then from now on, you can just say now add another line, best shirts of 2024, for example. And yeah, so you can now just use this chat as much as you want to do this. So we're going to click, well, we don't even need to click back in here. We can just hit control V here and then delete once and then control S. Now there might be a problem with the formatting. So you, you just kind of have, you kind of have to just trust the, trust the process here. So I'm now going to delete this one right here and I'm going to press control S again. Now we're pretty much ready to go. You can run your script now and the result should be a consistently good article. Now I will say sometimes it does struggle <clears throat> with choosing the right products. Sometimes you might have to just change the articles a little bit, but generally speaking, this is one of the most consistent ways I've found of ranking easily on Google. Now, before we actually run the script, let's have a little look at what is actually happening here. So the first thing that happens is the files are uploaded to OpenAI or they're like associated with this um, assistant that we're about to create. So the files are internal links.txt, products.txt, and two men content plan expanded one.csv. I don't know why I've done it like that. I don't know why all my file names are stupid, but whatever. And then it creates the assistant. So the assistant is the identity of the chat GPT model almost that you want to create. Now that's not really what it is, but that's kind of what I'm getting the feeling of. But what I will say is that you do still have to do some prompt engineering. So you, you are, I am giving you this prompt here, but if you want to change it, just if you want to make it informational, for example, just change this to every article should have three brand images minimum, and then change this file name to brand images .txt, And then inside testing dot three, change this to brand images .txt, And then just change everything else to just make it write informational content. You don't need me to do that. You, it does not take that long. Okay. You just need to change something in this prompt. Now I'm going to put this prompt inside a notepad just so we can have a little look at it. It's a bit easier to read. So we'll do, oops, let's do some wrapping view format word wrap. There we go. So instructions, every article should have three product image images minimum. When finding products, ensure they are relevant to the specific article you're writing. You must ensure the product image links are written fully and correctly. Sometimes it will give you dud images. All you have to do is just in the markdown output, just change that image link. It doesn't take very long. It's very, very easy to do. Every article must have product images, include at least three real product images in the final articles. Choose. I know that that's a repeat, but just trust me. This is how you, how you have to do these things. Choose only relevant product images. Do not invent image links. Never invent links or product images. Never use sources or footnotes. Read internal links.txt and products.txt. You always choose five strictly relevant. Don't ask why I'm just repeating over and over and over. Um, this is what you have to do. This is how I've managed to get it to give me good output. It's just repeating myself over and over and over. So all you have to do is just change the framing of this. Don't change the repetition. Don't change blah, blah, blah. Just change what you're giving it and change product images to brand images, for example. So let's have a look at the second prompt so you can start to see how this script actually works. So read the product URLs to find suitable products for articles. I should change this to um, or and titles. But I think this is why it sometimes doesn't choose the a good image. I will change that in the real script as well. But read the product URLs and titles to find suitable products for articles. Never invent links or product images. Choose five internal links and five product images that are relevant to blog post idea. For example, for exotic leather shoes, look for crocodile shoes, etc. For suit articles, look for suits. Now you can change that to whatever's relevant specifically to your uh, business. Again, I want to show you something quite interesting. 
the, what's happening here is because the CSV has been opened previously in the script, I'm not, I, I don't know where that is, but it has been, we can now call blog post idea inside these two brackets. That is how I have managed to get the script to write out content for a content plan, okay? So again, you can change anything you want um, in, in any of these prompts, okay? And then f the penultimate prompt is outline request. Do not invent image links. Use the prompt images and internal links from get internal links, which is this um, function right here, def, def get internal links. It's the function before, the prompt before that we just went through. And use them to create an outline for an article about blog post idea. In the outline, do not use sources or footnotes, but just add relevant product images in a relevant section and a relevant internal link in a relevant section. It doesn't follow this, but it does work in the end. So there is no need for a lot of sources. Each article needs a maximum of five product images and internal links. It completely ignores that. So yeah, it is what it is. And then the final one is <clears throat> the, the, the writing prompt. So use grade seven level English. Do not use overly creative or crazy language. Write as if writing for the Guardian newspaper. Just give information. Don't write like a magazine. Use simple language. Do not invent image links. You are writing from a first person plural perspective for the business. Refer to it in the first person plural. Add a key takeaway table at the top of the article, summarizing the main points. Never invent internal links or product images. Choose five internal links and five product images that's that are relevant to an article, and then write a detailed article based on the following outline. But put it in, the, and then it calls the outline here. Okay, so this at the bottom of here, you'll see it'll say print outline. Yeah, print outline for blah blah blah, and then outline. So then we call outline, and that's how we get it to write about what we want. But put it into a proper title, which invites a click. Title should be around six ca sixty characters. Include the product images and internal links naturally and with relevance inside the article. Use markdown formatting and ensure to use tables and lists to add to formatting. Use three relevant product images and internal links maximum. Never invent any internal links or product images. Anyway, that is the process. Now, now let's just run the script and I'll show you how it actually works. So we're going to do Python testing 3.py. Oh, of course, I haven't even installed OpenAI. So yeah, I'm glad that I tried to run the script in this video. So you're going to have to install OpenAI. And to do that, you just have to do pip install OpenAI. That's literally it. So we'll add that to the video thing here. Now you have the script. And then install OpenAI using pip. pip install OpenAI. And we need to add the API key as well. So just go to your playground. If you don't have OpenAI, if you don't have access to GPT-4, okay, what you need to do is you need to use the API inside Playground. As usual, I will be deleting this secret key at the end of this video, so don't try and um, use it. And then we should be ready to run the script. So we'll do Python testing 3.py. This is on a new system, so I'm not using anything to my advantage. I'm not hiding anything. I've just shown you exactly how I would set up this process from A to B. And let's just see, let's see what the output is. Um, I'm curious. So. At the moment, what I've been doing is I've also been using ChatGPT 3.5 to format the articles. Now, you don't have to do this. Another thing you could do is you could wait until it outputs the entire um, plan. So at the end of this run in about nine minutes, it takes about three minutes per article. What it will do is it will output an article that is, um, <clears throat> it will output a CSV called Two Men Content Plan Expanded um, processed plan or processed or something. And this will be a new file. You can then import that into Google sheets, and then you can just use a, a, a API call in Google sheets to format the content as well. And then you have, you know, all of the articles very, very easily formatted. However, what I suggest you do instead, and what I am doing personally, because I'm writing for clients and I don't want to 
write crap and I want the content to be good, what I'm doing is I'm watching the content as it comes out and making sure it's good. So let's have a look. Article for best sneaker brands for 2024. Let's copy this and you can tell me what you think. This is live. I haven't hidden anything. So if this is bad, I'm going to look pretty stupid. So I'm going to say format this article properly and then hit enter. So key sneaker brands to watch in 2024. Really good title. Key takeaways. This is a brand we sell. This is a brand we sell. This is a brand we sell. Hugo Boss with an image of a pair of Hugo Boss sneakers. Absolutely wonderful. And then a link to the, an internal link to our sneakers collection. Let's scroll down. Bloody beautiful. A pair of Kiton sneakers with a link to the Kiton collection. It worked. I'm so happy. Premiata, another brand we sell with a link to Premiata sneakers. And that's it. A very, very simple article. Not that many words. This is how I am currently destroying Google. Okay. Now, what I will say is you do kind of need like a legitimate business um, to do this. And so you need to like be selling things. That's kind of, yeah, the drawback to this. So each one, you can see the outline. This time it's black sneakers. So I've taken a big risk here because sometimes it struggles with color, but we will see the output in a second. Okay. I'm, I'm risking it. I'm risking it for a chocolate biscuit. Let's see what the output is. What I will say is I've had good success with colors and bad success with colors or bad results with colors. So it, it does work sometimes, but I, I will say now I am taking a big risk um, for this video, this 30 minute long video. But even if this one, even if this output gives me like a different colored shoe or something, I'm not too bothered because the first output was absolutely perfect. So if you want to see the output or I like to do things in convert markdown to HTML. So go to markdown to html.com, click here, control A, control V. And then if you want to edit things like change a link or like a, an image link or something, you can just very, very easily just change this link. And you could just change this title to a different Hugo Boss sneaker. It's really, really easy to do. You can very easily edit the article uh, here. And then you can just use markdown. You can take the HTML and you can put it into Shopify. So let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. This is probably going to let me down, but it's okay. So now format this article. Come on, don't give me any different colored shoes. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. Come on. I don't have high hopes. I'm not going to lie. Let's see. Okay, they're black. They have black on them. Oh, they're blue. They're blue. Anyway, like I said before, you can just hit copy here and you can just you know, very easily change the product image link. So I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, we'll go to collections, get on. Actually, we'll just go to sneakers and just find a pair of black sneakers. Okay, so you can literally just right click, uh, copy link, no, sorry, copy image address, click back here. So which one was wrong? It was the third one, so. All you have to do is just change this to this and I'll just change this to black temporarily. And then you can see now we have the black pair of shoes instead. Anyway, I will say, yeah, occasionally you do need to edit things. Um, but in general, it's the most consistent thing I have seen so far. So this time we're doing crocodile so let's see i did check the products.txt if you check products.txt control f crocodile you'll see there are some crocodile items here so i mean if it nails this one i will be very very happy it's now done it took six minutes to write three articles come on guys that is pretty impressive and then we'll have a look at the cost as well in just a second so we'll say now do this article and we'll see how it does. Come on, you can do it. Oh, they do have crocodile on them. That is crocodile. That is crocodile. That is crocodile. And that's that does have crocodile on as well. Yep, I remember seeing these products. 
They have crocodile like zips. Um, I think this is crocodile as well. Perfect. Yeah, absolutely bloody perfect. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'm really, really proud of what I've done here. I'm really, really happy with the the results. You can see it has internal links. It has it can choose images specifically from the products. It's amazing. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you very, very soon with some more content. If you're watching until the very end, you're a legend as usual, and peace out.